Okay, so we're assuming now that these have uh, come back from the uh, the clinic. They've been tried in and they're okay. I'm just putting some finishing touches to the <laughs> waxwork here. Your Brunei torch. It's been, yeah, with the Brunei <laughs> torch, yeah. Where it's um, been scratched or marked during transit or during the try-in. Uh, the next thing we need to consider then is the uh, the post dam line. I'm cutting a post dam in. This is the extent of the denture as it stands at the moment. And when you lift it off, you can see where the old denture was because it's left a, an indentation in the palette. Uh, I'm just drawing it on. And, oh, you wouldn't normally do this. It's just to show you where where the old one is. So this one's come back and wants the post dam uh, to match the old denture. So this is a, a little chisel type tool. I think it's called a Mitchell's 10. And uh, that's used just to carve the post dam in. And the post dam is deep at the posterior and it tapers off into the palate. It's quite hard to see is. there, isn't it? But yeah. You yeah. can see it a little bit here. Can you see the shape of the chisel? Yeah. It follows that shape of the chisel. Yeah. So it's deep at the back and then tapers into the palate. And that's going to create the, the seal across the back of the denture. And we bring the post dam right up around the back of the uh, tuberosity there and down into the buccal sulcus. Just lightly down into the buccal sulcus. And then that's repeated all the way up and to the uh, other side of the denture. So the denture is now sealed all the way around onto the model to stop any plaster getting on onto it. This is now the first process in making a mould of the denture. So hot wax knife, small amount of wax, seal all the way around the denture onto the model. Same with the lower denture. And then we remove the model from the articulating base with a gentle tap of the plaster knife. And that was well. the purpose, yeah, yeah, that was the purpose of the chamfering then, so we mm. can take the model out and reposition it. Yeah, you've got to be gentle because that um uh, the articulating plaster or white plaster used is rather soft, isn't it? So it's mm. easy to destroy, I think. Ah, a flask. A uh, flask, yes. So this is what we're going to use to make the mould. That's why we had to move it from the articulating base because these flasks are only a certain height, so we wouldn't be able to fit them in. Have you Vaseline those? I have put a smear of Vaseline on the uh, mating surfaces of them, mm. so and on the outside, so the plaster comes off easier later. So we're making the first half of the mold. Then this is just normal plaster of Paris in the shallow half of the mold, and we're going to use this to secure the model into this this half of the mold. So the model's been soaking in some water. You've got to wait until the bubbles stop, haven't you? Wait until yeah. the bubbles stop, yeah. Otherwise, it's, uh, the bubbles can come out and into your plaster, and also the models would dry the plaster out too quickly yeah, as well. It doesn't stick. So we pop those in, let the plaster set a little, and then what we're doing is cutting the plaster between the model and the edge of the flask, and we're aiming to create a mould that has no undercuts so that when we make the second half we'll be able to remove one from the other without causing any damage. Yeah. And you should be making the slope from the the periphery of the dental model to the edge of the flask to the inside of the flask, shouldn't you? Yeah. Because it's easy with a knife just to drag it round and create a nice line line, but then the flask won't shut properly. Yeah, you need to keep the mating mm. surfaces clean so that they'll, they'll go all the way together. Okay, same with the lower. Just cleaning the edges of the flask again. And then once it's firmed up a little bit, you can run it under the tap and just smooth the plaster off. Clean any excess off the flask. You've got to be careful here, haven't you? Because it's very easy to just sort of... Uh run your finger through and the plaster disappears if you're not careful. But Okay, so you can see there we've got a nice uh, a smooth section of plaster. There's no undercuts. There might be a little bit at the heel of <laughs> that one actually. That's it come uh, off. <laughs> we'll see what happens there. And then once it's set, we allow it to dry and let it set and then we, we 
put a, a, a real thin smear of Vaseline on the uh, plaster surfaces and that's going to stop the second half of the mould sticking. It's very important plaster. not to forget that. Yeah. Um, when I was learning I forget it quite a lot and it's go, go do it again time. So we fill the deep half of the mould now and then we um, put some plaster into all the fine surface detail of the denture. Now you're using a different plaster. Yeah, this is uh, mixed with kaffir this time so the plaster is going to be a lot tougher. Uh, we use the tough plaster because um, when we pack the denture we put the, uh, the mould under a lot of load and this is going to, this part of the, the mould will be under a lot of load and in the other half of the denture, the one that we've just done, it'll be the model that's under load and that's already made out of tough, tough plaster and just needs securing in place. Now this is the tricky bit, isn't it? And making sure you've got no air on the teeth. That's right. Um, yeah. Otherwise you end up with a denture with lots of little uh, lumps and bumps all over it. And straight in. Turn it over, line up the lugs on the flask. Press it so it's completely together. And then we just leave it to bench set. We don't touch it. You don't want the plaster moving around. So... That plaster now then will have gone into all the fine surface detail of the denture, recorded that, set around the teeth and we've then put it in boiling water is that to, just to, just oh, to that's soften too, the right, wax yeah. okay. and then we can open the two parts of the mould up like this and then the base plate can be removed along with the Wax should be the wax. The bottom, yeah. But it should hold on to all the teeth. Yep, the plaster's around yeah. all the teeth and will secure them in. So you can see there's still some bits of wax left in there and what we'll do is just drop it in, the, in some boiling water and get rid of the, yeah. the rest of that until the mould's nice and clean. Some labs have a special machine for this called a boiling out machine, don't they? Which is a bit like a dishwasher, yep. um, but it smells a bit more. Um, and it, it's just a, a spray arm of boiling water that you just drop your flasks into. Now this is sodium alginate, which is derived from seaweed, I believe, and it, uh, it reacts with the, um, the calcium sulphate in the plaster and forms like a skin, doesn't it? Um, so uh, how many layers are you using? Just one here? Just one, yeah. So we coat all the plaster surfaces with this and it's going to stop the acrylic sticking to the plaster. We avoid yeah. getting it in pulls around the teeth and so on. You can see the teeth stuck into the plaster there. And then once that's dried, we can mix up some acrylic dough. And it's a monomer and polymer, polymer mixed together. And you probably know that it goes through all its stages. It's sandy and stringy and whatever. And this is the dough mixed up. And you can yeah. see it's still quite stringy here. Yeah. So I'm going to put it back in the pot. And this is it once it gets to the Sh correct stage. And it snaps. snaps. There we go. There oh, you go. Very good. Perfect. Yeah. So once it's reached this stage, we can then use it to pack the denture. So very clean hands at this stage. You need to mm -hmm. wash your hands so you don't get bits and pieces in the in the uh, acrylic dough. Is this a veined acrylic? It is, yeah. yeah. So that's into the upper denture so it's right over the palate a small amount of excess in there and then we're going to put the two halves together same with the lower just in a horseshoe shape on the lower this is all pre-measured for you isn't it you know how much you need for an up and a low it's all it's all done for you mm -hmm. and then highly technical we put them in a big press Don't and give them a good squeeze mm. and wait it's important not to just jam them down and then go, that's it. Um, you've got to wait. And the excess um, um, polymer dough will come out of the gaps in the flask, and it does take a few minutes, doesn't it? Um, yeah. We call it flash. And it's that flash which mm -hmm. can hold the two halves of the mould apart very slightly, and that gives rise to the increase in vertical dimension of the denture. So we can never get rid of that completely with this method of making dentures. Um, there are other methods of converting wax dentures into acrylic dentures which do avoid the increase in vertical dimension, but this is the most popular method. These, is now, these are now being put into a clamp then which keeps them under pressure. 
and then they're going to go into a curing bath so this is a, a container full of water and it's going to go through a cycle of warming them up until they get to about 100 degrees and then they'll hold them at 100 degrees for a couple of hours the whole process takes about five or six hours it's all automated and then they'll be ready for knocking out of the molds in the acrylic state okay job done excellent